Did you buy a Forerunner to occasionally cruise gravel back roads? Well, no, of course not. You got one to hit us some trails, some dunes, or maybe crawl some rocks. If you plan to use your runner the way it's meant to be used, wheels and tires are one of the first modifications that need to be addressed on your truck. In this fitment guide, we're taking a close look at the 4th Gen 4Runner 03-09 here in the States. This info might be applicable to other Yoda models and generations with independent front suspension, like the Tacoma for example, but obviously you want to verify that information with a fitment expert before just buying wheels and tires. Now basic info, 6x139.7 lug nuts with an M12x1.5 thread, center bore is 106.1 millimeters and 81 foot-pounds of torque. You're not here to learn about stock wheels, but it's good to compare aftermarket to stock specs so you can anticipate how much clearance you're going to lose or need to add, depending on how you look at things. There's nothing worse than ordering what you think is a direct fit just to have it rub like crazy even driving in a straight line. Your factory wheel is going to be one of the following, either a 16x7 plus 30, 17x7.5 plus 30, or 18x7.5 plus 25, so basically all the same with different diameters. You get something between 16 and 18 inch from the factory, with around the same diameter tire, 30.6 inches regardless. For aftermarket wheels, almost everyone runs 17 so that's what you're going to find in this guide for the most part you could always run 16s or 18s or if you're building a pavement princess throw some 24s on there just use this info and get the equivalent tire size for whatever size wheels you choose so as i said 17s are the go-to but well what width and offset width doesn't really matter on the wheels as much as tire width matters eight to nine inches good wheel width for these rigs but offset is a big deal because lower offset is going to result in less clearance of course to get the mean look that you want you're going to want at least a 12 offset now a lot of runners with aftermarket wheels are using a negative offset, for example, negative 1 to negative 10, and if you're in the market for wheels, you're probably getting lower offset anyway. Bear in mind that most will require some additional work, so for a bolt-on fit, a plus 12 is good, but if you want to lift or trim, you can do a lower offset. A good rule is when turning lock to lock, you're going to lose half an inch of clearance for every one inch that your new wheels poke out compared to stock, so if you put one inch spacers on your stock wheels, you're going to lose half an inch of clearance when turning. If you're confused, don't worry, we're going to explain to you in the OEM Plus Fit section to illustrate this as well or check out our guide which is linked down below feel free to skip ahead to learn more about the tire size you're looking to run or just watch the whole thing now Talking really quickly about skinny versus wide tires. Pizza cutters, as they're commonly referred to, is popular on these rigs. This is a big topic that sparks a lot of debate, but here's a really quick rundown before we get into a lot of other stuff. Pros, there's less sprung weight, so better fuel economy and acceleration. These cars don't have a ton of power, so you might need that. They do cut through loose terrain like mud, sand, and snow. More clearance, especially for the upper control arms, which can be an issue. And less tire often leads to a more affordable tire. Cons wise, wide tires float on surfaces like deep snow snow or sand, which is better in some cases depending on what you want to do with your rig. Now there's less stability on and off road, the truck's not as wide, so it's going to feel like it wants to roll if you're in a precarious spot on the trails or hit that off ramp a little bit too quickly. Lower offset wheels can help with this by increasing the track width, however. There are fewer options for size, plus not all wheel models come in skinny specs, and there isn't an exact width that qualifies certain tires as skinnies, but we'd say that anything narrower than the factory 265 is going to count, 255 being the most common here. If you're looking for tires at any size we've got them on our website again link down below so enough talk what do these specs look like we're getting into oem plus tire fitment on stock sport wheels 17 7 half plus 30 with goodyear wrangler dura track 265 70s these are 31.6 inch tires on factory suspension and tires with an aggressive tread pattern could cause an issue here some of you watching might be looking to keep the factory wheels and suspension but are after a larger tire and other than that you want to keep everything else oem well in this case the largest size you can go up 265 70 17 or about a 31 point six inch one inch larger than stock tire your factory wheels will still be sunken in but it's better than nothing and gives it a more aggressive look the 04 two wheel drive that's pictured up behind me right now is on factory sport wheels with 265 70 17 tires otherwise not much to say about this one's pretty oem plus unfortunately this is as far as you can go without any additional work but good news this is one of the most widely supported platforms for modifications, so you don't have to be afraid to modify it. Now, next up, we're taking a look at a truck with some 969-61-17.5 negative 10s, and these are wrapped up in Hankook Dynapro AT2 Extremes, 265-70-17 tires, Bilstein 5100 shocks, Moog FJ Cruiser Springs, no rubbing. Now, what happens if you run the same tires, 265-70-17s, but with lower offset wheels? Well, these wheels are 8.5 inch wide with a negative 10 offset. This means they poke about 2.5 inches out compared to the stock wheel. 
wheels. Based on the rule of thumb, you can expect that the minimum clearance when turning is going to be reduced by 1.25 inches. Extra poke divided by two equals reduced clearance. 31.6 inch tires are already a tight fit, so when combined with negative offset wheels, a lift kit or trimming is required. This 4Runner is on a set of Bilstein 5100s with Moog FJ Cruiser Springs. Bilstein 5100s are very common on these trucks, and when paired with the FJ Springs, you can get a little bit more lift out of them. This one is lifted about 2.5 to 3 inches, and the result is zero rubbing issues. Heck, even the factory mud flaps were retained if you're into that. These 969 wheels are TE37 reps, however they are probably the best reps you can buy. This truck is running the regular type as opposed to the kind with a deep lip. We did make a whole episode about 969 in our All About series. If you want to learn more about them, check that out. They're a really interesting wheel brand. If you are interested in picking up a set of these or a set of real TEs, we have both. You can check them out in our shop linked down below. Now when it comes to 33 inch tire fitment, you could consider this the in-between size. 33s will require lift and some trimming, but should be doable for just about anyone. SCS Blaze 10, 17 and a half negative 10 wheels with DF Goodwrench AT KO2 285 70 17 inch tires on a 2003 limited four wheel drive. Bilstein 5100s again, two and a half inch front, one inch coil spacer rear, no rubbing. Now here's an 03 limited four wheel drive with the same Bilstein lift kit. This has an additional shock spacer compared to the other one. It's a similar suspension setup, but this one is on a larger 285-70-17 tire. These are equivalent to 33s, and again the wheels are 17 by 8.5 negative 10, which does provide a good amount of poke for rigs with a small lift. 33s do take a little bit more modification to fit, but you don't need to do a body mount chop. The way to avoid a body mount chop is with aftermarket upper control arms and adjustment to get a little bit more caster, pushing the wheels farther forward on the truck. Along with a proper alignment, you will need to do some light trimming on the body panels, mount the fender liner deeper in the wheel wells, and and possibly pound the pinch welds flat, depending on your truck. However, you should not need to cut or weld any metal. Up behind me, you're gonna see a visual reference of what needs to be trimmed. Now, you probably won't need to take this much material off for 33s, but the idea is generally going to be the same. The rear should not need any trimming as well. This next truck is sitting on American Racing AR172 Bajas and 17.9 negative 12 with Kenda Clever AT285 7017s. This one's on the same Bilstein 5100s with Toy Tech Springs, JBA upper control control arms, white line LCA bushing, supreme suspension sway bar relocation, left side DIY BMC, toy tech adjustable suspension components all over the rear, Icon 2.0 shocks, it's a long mod list. Check out our fitment guide, it's down below. If you get wheels that are more aggressive, you might need to do this body mount chop in addition to other mods. This truck is another one with a Bilstein 5100 kit, and this one's set at 1.75 inches of lift. A difference here is the addition of a half inch body lift. Now body lift is cheap, and it gives a little bit more room for the suspension to travel, but does come with some headaches like raising the center of gravity of your truck and creating a weird gap between the frame and the body. My personal recommendation is sticking with a regular suspension lift for 33s and consider a body lift for larger stuff, but do what you gotta do to fit the wheels on your truck, right? Now everyone wants 35 inch tires, at least until they realize the work that's involved in 35 inch tires. If you wanna go this route, buy a Raptor. Just kidding, be warned, it involves a lot of cutting on your 4Runner. Here's a breakdown of what is needed to get 35s under your 4th gen. So lift-wise, you're going to need at least 3 inches, either just 3 inches of suspension lift or some combination of suspension body lift. More lift will mean less trimming as usual. Body mount chop is required, no way around it. Upper control arms such as SPC help to add cast removing the wheels forward. Also, correcting positive camber is important here. Adjustment of the bolts allow even more caster. Cutting and hammering pinch welds are a must. Body panel mods, same concept as 33s, but just more. Plan on removing material from the front, the back, and the top of the fenders. Now in the rear, three inches of lift, again like the front, plus springs for a bit more lift. Similar trimming to the front, but the back is a lot easier. Avoid wheels with too much back spacing as they tend to rub the upper control arms, which is just a pain in the butt. A metal front bumper isn't required, but it does save you the trouble of hacking up the OEM plastic one. So it depends how much time you want to spend versus how much money you want to spend. This truck is on Mayhem Compass 8305 17x9 negative 6 wheels with Cooper Evolution MT 3512 50 17s. I'm not going to run you through the whole modification list, but editors, you can put it up behind me. There is quite a long one on this truck. This 2005 is sitting on true 35s with just a 3 inch lift from Rough Country, 
no body lift. Now, less lift does require more trimming, but with a sawzall and enough time, anything is possible. The owner of this truck reports there's no rubbing at all. However, it doesn't look to be a ton of clearance in the front, so take that with a grain of salt. It's possible the setup could rub and the suspension's fully compressed, and one option here is extended bump stops, although they're kind of a band-aid fix. Now getting on to another truck here, this one is on American Racing 201 17 by 9 negative 12 with Falcon Wild Peak 315 70 17 tires. Bilstein 5100s with heavy duty springs and again editors throw that mod list up behind me because it is a long one. Fitting 35s on this truck is a pain in the butt. This one's on 35s with the same Bilstein 5100 kit that we've seen a bunch of times already in this video. To go with the Bilsteins, old man emu heavy duty springs and a 1 inch body lift were used. A modest body lift combined with a kit like the 5100s could just be the way to go. You get the additional ground clearance from the lift, but you also don't have to do as much trimming. This one still needed some trimming on the front and rear bumpers to make things work. Now you might know American Racing as a maker of muscle car wheels that your dad probably runs on his Chevelle, but they also have a lot of cool options for your truck. I like the Bajas personally, but if you're looking for any American Racing, check them out in the link down below. So pulling it all back together, congrats, you got a 4Runner. You're now unofficially part of the 17-inch wheel only club. Better not get caught riding around on those 18-inch TRD Pros. In reality, you can run 18s if you want, just size the tire accordingly. 20s? Well, it's your vehicle at the end of the day, right? Do whatever you want. Whatever wheels you get, remember that 3-piece US is the only place to get them. Remember that offset plays a big role in whether or not they're going to rub. If you want to get some different wheels, at the very least, look into a Bilstein suspension kit. They're super affordable and give you adjustability, much like coilovers would for your car. Now, if you have a modded runner of any type, OEM Plus, 6 inches of lift, squatted, lowered, lifted, I don't really care. Add it to our vehicle gallery. It's a great place to help others by sharing your fitment. And as always, guys, thank you so much. Let us know what vehicle we should do a fitment guide on next down in the comments below, and I'll see you in the next one.